the late winter of 2015, I stumbled across a blog. I don't remember how or why, but I sat on my bed reading this page that started with a beautiful plant and ended with the struggles the city dweller had with maintaining this particularly finicky plant. Although it was just a simple page about an indoor tree, oddly enough, something clicked. I fell in love with the fiddly fig plant. As I became fascinated, I began to research, which opened an incredibly important new door for me. It introduced me to the world of fiddly fig blogs. This started what my parents had probably hoped was just a phase. And after enough research and waiting, I finally found my fiddly fig of my very own. After enough time, three smaller plants followed. And besides having just created a mini jungle in my room, I realized over time that I was able to be more calm and productive in my room than I had before getting the plants. I realized that I was able to get work done better than any time before, even though I've never necessarily been comfortable in my room. If I realized this, I looked around in other places where we spend much of our day and realized that although some public places do have indoor plants, far too many do not. This led me to the question of, what would happen if we changed that? If my productivity increased, how could we have helped the productivity of other people? Could the students that I tutor be able to learn more effectively? If we put plants in a classroom, could we improve the learning environment of an entire classroom? Extending that further, could we improve the productivity of an entire company? This is important as it could affect anybody. If you're like the average American, you spend, according to a 2001 report by the Environmental Protection Agency, almost 90% of your day indoors. Since the Industrial Revolution, we have centered our way of life around the indoors so that we can better focus on being successful without having to rely on factors that we cannot control, like the weather. While we usually don't see this problem as a very, as, although we usually don't see this as a very real problem in our day-to-day -day lives, our hobbit habits can have very real effects on our health, success, and overall well-being. This problem was brought on by the way we have built up our way of life over the past few hundreds of years, with houses, factories, work buildings, supermarkets, and transportation essentially taking away our need to be outside in order to survive. And although we created this problem, albeit unintentionally, through slow and meticulous urban development, we don't need to make incredibly drastic changes in order to help reduce some of the negative effects our oversheltering can bring on. In true post-industrial era fashion, we can just bring the outside in. Indoor plants have long been a staple in our homes. They symbolize the thriving of the household itself and play a vital role in interior design. However, as soon as we leave the home, they become far less common. By putting indoor plants into places where many people will see them, more people in total will be able to gain the positive effects indoor plants have for us as more people will be able to see them. When deciding to put indoor plants into public spaces, a big question is where? I think a good place to start is with where we live, or for many of us students, where we are going to live when we move on to higher education, residence halls. Although they are, in theory, a place where only a few students live, they are, in reality, incredibly social, with a high amount of human traffic. A 2015 study at Chungnam National University in South Korea also has shown that nature-like experiences restored the mind from the mental fatigue of work and studies, which in turn contributed to an improved work performance. This means that when we add indoor plants into our, into our rooms, we are setting ourselves up for success academically by allowing ourselves to spend more time studying without getting tired quite as e easily. Additionally, a 1995 study at the University of Michigan proved that by looking at indoor plants, people were able to be more calm as it suppressed autonomic nervous system activity, which controls the fight or flight response. Therefore, we will be able to make our college experience a more calm and pleasant one overall. Besides just keeping plants where we live, keeping plants in classrooms has been proven to be very useful as well. In 2012, when plants were added to a computer lab at Washington State University, participants increased their computer reaction time by 12%, decreased their overall stress levels, and all without changing the total number of mistakes that they were making. In 2012, a University of Sydney in Australia study showed similar results. When almost 300 middle school students were divided randomly into classrooms with plants and classrooms without, those that were randomly assigned into the classrooms with plants consistently scored 10 to 14% higher on tests than those that were placed in the plantless rooms, even though they were taking the same exact tests. Although it is unclear why exactly this correlation exists, it makes a difference. 
My peers and I have fairly recently learned through the college application process that even a small increase in our GPA and test scores can have a very big impact on our future. So by putting indoor plants into classrooms, we are setting ourselves and other classmates up for success academically by giving us an advantage both in the competitive higher education sector as well as the competitive job sector that follows. As many of us move through our education and begin planning our transition into the workforce, or even for those of us already in the workforce, it is important to remember that according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, we spend on average almost nine hours each day only working usually indoors and in confined spaces. For the majority of us, this means that the majority of, the of our day will be spent only working. And while this responsibility may seem daunting, it also shows exactly how important work is to us as we are willing to put so much of our, cons of our lives into it. If work plays such an important part in our life, why not improve it so that we can make the most out of it? By introducing plants into work environments, we, are imp we will be able to improve our productivity and happiness while working, which in turn can benefit our long-term psychological well-being. In terms of office jobs, for example, this psychological benefits are clearly shown in two separate studies, one by the University of Vermont and the other by the University of Washington, both citing increased worker satisfaction, increased mor employee morale, decreased absences, and increased overall worker efficiency only after having placed plants into work environments. This change in worker and student attitude is monumental, as this is where we spend the majority of the conscious part of our day, both now and in the future. So its effects have a significant impact on both our success and our long-term mental health. While it has long been proven that gardening can have therapeutic effects, these studies are monumental in that they show that these benefits can also be gained simply by looking at an indoor plant. Beyond dorms, offices, and classrooms, I believe the hospitals are also a very important place where we should put indoor plants. According to a 2004 Kansas State University study by the Department of Horticulture, when plants were added into a, into a hospital room for recovering patients, patients reported less pain, anxiety, and fatigue, as well as less systolic blood pressure than their control group counterparts. This means that when we add plants into our into hospital rooms, patients will have a better time recovering, which in turn re resulted in a shorter hospitalization time altogether. So when we put plants into hospital rooms, we will be able to be treat more patients in total because shorter hospitalization time means more beds in the recovery department. Although this isn't that easy, right? Hospital ecosystems are fragile, with humidity, temperature, and dust all carefully managed in order to bring on the best possible healing conditions of patients of all kinds and avoid mold. Could plants disrupt this? Definitely. NASA used indoor plants in order to avoid mold and to filter out toxins from the air. And although these benefits are positive, they prove that plants do have an impact on the surrounding air, possibly jeopardizing the effectiveness of a hospital air filtration system. Additionally, soil for potted plants and water for cut flowers can also harbor harmful bacteria, possibly jeopardizing the recovery of a patient. Can the solution bake or silk plants? These studies have all shown that the important part of the equation is the opportunity to look at an indoor plant. So a real looking fake plant would still provide hospitals with the effective, inexpensive, and non-invasive benefits without having to worry them about allergies, bacteria, or compromising the recovery of a patient. There are many theories as to why these benefits exist, from evolution has caused us to want to be around them for food and oxygen, to the color green is re relaxing. While we don't know exactly why these benefits exist, it is important because they do exist. However, you still may be thinking that although these benefits seem great in theory, they would be hard to implement because having plants requires work. But that's the thing though. Although they require a little bit of work, it is not enough of a reason not to incorporate indoor plants into public spaces. Let's think about this plant here. This is a ZZ plant, also known as a Zanzibar gem. It is growing in popularity. Why? Because they are so easy to take care of. In fact, they thrive off of neglect. They need very little sunlight and only need to be watered about once a week. And one watering a week, that's about as much time as it takes to fill your coffee cup in the morning. However, if the responsibility of keeping a plant alive still seems daunting and like it would cause more stress than it would benefits, it's okay to have fake plants instead. 
All of these studies have shown that the important part of the equation is the ability to look at a plant. So while you wouldn't be able to kill off your sh show off your killer botanical skills, you would still be able to gain these positive effects that plants have for us. Indoor plants, overall, are important in that they have psychological and physiological effects spanning many different situations. Keeping indoor plants in open and shared spaces will allow for more people in total to be able to get these benefits as more people will be able to see them. However, how can we do this if the plants just aren't there? We, however, have the opportunity to change that and make these theoretical benefits become a reality simply by putting indoor plants into public spaces. And while we don't have a significant say in how hospitals and universities decorate, by putting indoor plants into our own shared living and workspaces, we are both bringing these benefits into our own lives as well as allowing other people to get these benefits too. This, in turn, can also normalize the keeping of indoor plants in public spaces, increasing the total amount of indoor plants in shared spaces as well, leading us to a more healthy, happy, and successful society. Thank you.